And wow. then it was like, it went from, from that experience of knowing I'm not made out of glass to having a guy half my size, like this guy just could fold me at will, right? And like, <laughs> you had this complete like realization that somebody who's well-trained can just do what he wants to you. And uh, yeah, then like everything changed. Then it was wow. like a, a switch of like how seriously I took it. I wanted to do that. Yeah. You know? Like when I experienced it, it was uncomfortable, yeah. but I wanted to do that. Hi guys and welcome back to Fit Father. This is episode four and today we have Warren Allison. He is the owner of Grizzly Bear uh, Academy in Bloemfontein. And uh, yeah, Warren, if you can maybe just introduce yourself a bit and just tell us like where you're from. Uh, you know, how did you how did you get into the the jujitsu game, um, into mixed martial arts? Okay, awesome. Yeah, firstly, thank you for having me. Um, thank you so much. It's awesome to do this type of thing and gain experience doing stuff like this so yeah i uh, used to compete uh, professional mixed martial arts um and now i've got the the club where i'm coaching and uh, training jiu-jitsu boxing uh, regardless of if you're trying to be an athlete or or you're just coming there for for different types of reasons fitness whatever it may be yeah we're catering to those types of things yeah awesome. so you don't have to be a diehard like mixed martial artist or like it's it's there for training it's there for fitness it's there for the athlete it's there for for everyone you kind of you know cover the entire community yeah like so i mean it's it's nice to work with the athletes and that but mm. you know that's not everybody's goal uh, everybody has different commitments and so forth so you know the, the community that that we surround uh, everyone grows each other in the club Awesome. Tell me, um, your if if you can go back in time, like how did you get into martial arts? How did he? Where did it start? If you go way back. Yeah. So, actually, some friends like invited me to a kickboxing class, um, and it was for fitness from other sports that we did. You know, like they said, come try this. This is great for fitness and so on. Um, so I had, there was hesitation in the beginning, but like, so I eventually went and yeah, like I really, I'd not experienced something like that before. Um, the, the, the fitness element was great, but also, you know, so these guys like sparred a bit after class and stuff and they like convinced me, oh, just come spar and stuff. So I did it. And I think the thing that intrigued me the most was I wasn't made out of glass you know, like I had this, like, it's, it's almost like I stepped out of comfort zone oh. when, when I experienced that. And it was, it was such a nice feeling mm. to, to know that I'm not as vulnerable <clears> as <throat> I think. And then, yeah, like I spent time in the kickboxing and stuff and I really started, um, getting more invested in the sport. And, uh, yeah, me and my friends used to watch some of the early the UFCs. This is like UFC 55. This is, <laughs> this is a time ago. Way back. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, so <clears throat> back then, MMA in South Africa was, you know, most of the guys were kickboxers and stuff. And my friend told me, um, who one of the guys who trained with me had this guy that was a jiu-jitsu practitioner. And he said, yo, we must like really, I would like you to meet him and yeah. and so on. And then uh, eventually I did that. And wow. then it was like, it went from from that experience of knowing I'm not made out of glass to having a guy half my size. Like this guy just could fold me at will, right? And like <laughs> you had this complete like realization that somebody who's well-trained can just do what he wants to you. And uh, yeah, then like everything changed. Then it was wow. like a, a switch of like how seriously I took it. I wanted to do that. Yeah. You know? Like when I experienced it, it was uncomfortable, yeah. but I wanted to do that. That's awesome. So, and, and you say this guy is like, he was half your size. Yeah, no. Just like, shows you. Yeah, and he met, like he could just fold me. Like I knew if he wanted to do it any time, he could just take me out. You know, there's something that's kind of ringing through all of these podcasts. So, if, you know, each guy that I, that, that, that I invite, you know, he's in his own right, in his own way, he's he's like a like an expert in whatever he does and um but this is this one thing that just kind of keeps on 
you know, going through all of the, the discussions. Um, and it's, it's almost this feeling of like, a lot of guys think, you know, uh, the one guy actually, he, he used the exact words, he said, you know, think I'm a breaker key or a, you know, a big guy or whatever. And then you meet someone like that who's trained yeah. and he's got the technique and he's got it down to a T and knows how to do it. It's just, it just changes the whole, the whole picture. Yeah. So, and then tell me, so, so you, you met him, you got into jujitsu. What happened then? Um, you also, I mean, I know you, that you did compete, uh, in EFC. Yes. Um, and there are actually, there, I think there are, there are videos, there are a couple of videos on, on YouTube, uh, where, yeah. where you can, can check out your fights. Yeah. I think there's some of them mm. that, that are on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was still, before I even went there, I was like already competing, um, I think before I met uh, Chris, who's the, the <clears throat> jiu-jitsu guy, and okay. he was, he's in PE, he's got a club there, and yeah, so I fought EFC 3, um, that was my professional debut, so obviously before then had some amateur fights, uh, more in the kickboxing scene type of thing, and then yeah, went to EFC, and I fought uh, Gareth McClellan, he eventually became EFC champion, went on to the UFC, Jeez. Uh, fought there, and uh I made my debut against him and yeah, it didn't go great. It didn't go great for me at all. So it, that was like kind of like why I wanted to, mm. you know, pursue to train with the best. Like Chris at that point uh, was like, I think he was like 28 and 0, you know. Mm. So, and again, that was a time when the, a lot of kickboxers were yeah. fighting and he would just take them down and, and finish wow. them on the ground. That's amazing. This yeah. is something, um, and I saw this weekend with, with the Strickland fight. Again, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, the guys, you know, the, the different skill sets. And again, the guy who's trained and who knows and understands the technique. Um, it's just amazing. Like when you take, when those guys take a guy down yeah. uh, in, in, with jiu-jitsu, it's, they've got absolute control yeah. uh, over the guy. It's just impossible. Tell me, Chris, uh, is he he's still in PE? Yes, and does he's, he he's he's still got the... Yeah, he's got his own gym there. Um, okay. PE submission fighting. Awesome. Yeah, and he's got a couple of... Uh, good guys uh, from his gym um one of the guys is going to i think it's uh, the polish trials for adcc i think it's next weekend Yeesh. yeah that's insane and you also you just went to um what was the fight in in Joburg? Uh, uh, the winner takes all winner takes all yeah it's it was interesting so that's this is the first time so you know from a, a spectator's point of view so you hear jiu-jitsu and you hear kickboxing you hear mma you you know, you, you kind of hear all these different, um, like, names and, and stuff. But in your mind, in my mind, I see a cage. Like, this is, yeah. like, that's, you know, it's it's a cage fight. And it's, and jiu-jitsu is actually, if you look at the, the pure, like, jiu-jitsu sport, it, it was the first time that I saw only jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And how jiu-jitsu is, is actually, like, how the guys, you know, compete in jiu-jitsu. Um, did, it was... Chris, did they also compete there? Were they also in? Uh, he's one guy was in the bracket. Okay. Uh, ended up uh, winning the the title. That was uh, Jason Durant. Oh, was he, it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the guy. Amazing. Mm. That's awesome. So tell me, son. Okay, so you got involved in um, in jujitsu, and and obviously you 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 built up a quite a love or a passion for it. Uh, how and when did this roll over to coaching? Yeah. So. I think, um, you know, it was difficult for me to to travel all the time to PE. So back in the day, mm. like we got involved um, with a bit of like creating students that wanted to do or like more, I wouldn't say students, but like training partners yeah. that would be interested in the jiu-jitsu and stuff mm. as well. And we went about it that way. It wasn't really coaching back then, but I suppose slowly it started to develop through that. Um, also, because you want guys to pick up a level quickly, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the better guys you train with, the better you're going to be. So, of course, yeah. So through time, it, it I suppose it slowly developed. And then, uh, yeah, it got to a point where I think my last professional fight, I fought uh, Rene Derrida. I was maybe, well, I think about... 35 36 years old yeah. and there's a turning point where you kind of like so my my goal was always to get to the highest level mm. right um and i lost against Renier, and 
he went on to do great things. I mean, like two time, like a double champion yep. at one FC and stuff. So, yep. but still, like I knew at that point, you know, sometimes MMA is unforgiving. You mm. know, you you take a loss, it take, puts you quite a far yeah. way back. So, at that point, I knew like, okay, I want to shift my focus now. Um, I'm getting to an age where it's it's pointless to try and pursue that, right? Mm-hmm. And I can't live my whole mm-hmm. life. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, chasing something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So I knew like, you know, I need to support a family one day and stuff. So I took a step back a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, I re- rethought everything. And I was like, let's let's put some time into the coaching. Because mm. it, I like love the sport, you know? Yeah, so that's that's obvious. Um, and tell me, so so how did you how did you start out? So you, you decided, you you know, you, you're you going to do the coaching thing now yeah. more. Um, how did you get going? Who, like... How did you start getting, uh, you know, members in? Um, if you can yeah. maybe just uh, explain a bit on that. Yeah, at that point, um, I think at uh, when I'm trying to recall the timeline, mm. but it, I think it was roughly the time. Yeah, I was started uh, at Questjam, okay. and I started teaching. So people would come from Questjam, and they'd have the ability to. Um, Come train there as well. If okay. you were a member of Quest, you could, you could come join the Jiu Jitsu or the the MMA. And then yeah, like oh. it, it became difficult. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. I I was actually so I used to train at Quest, and I remember there's when you go into Quest, like to the right, there was a big mat. Yes, yes, yes. And, that's and right. I, I remember like checking these guys in the mornings, like yes, guys are busy roughing up. <laughs> <laughs> next to me okay yeah. so it started over yeah, there okay. yeah it started like so i would say from there mm. like the real coaching started okay and yeah it became difficult you know just the being like in the middle of that gym environment yeah. um a lot of people would come and i think they felt a little bit uncomfortable you know starting something and you see like uh in the room there's two different types of people mm. uh, like the gym people and i think it's the nature of the sport is like difficult because you you know, you start off as the nail, right? You yeah. know, and you, you, they don't want to see that, that vulnerability around lots of people in the gym. So mm. I had a friend who suggested that, uh, let's start something. Okay. And, uh, he said, like, I think it's time for you to, 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 to start thing. a business and, awesome. and, and start coaching. And he helped me get, get on my feet. Wow. And, um, yeah, from there started and moved around. No, we are where we are now. That's awesome. Mm. That's awesome. So um, we talk a bit about the coaching and the the way in which you coach. So, coach. so, so let's take, so so I've got a little, except for my school days, um, but I've got a little, you know, with also with kickboxing, uh, some experience in actually having a guy, you know, in your face and, and, and you know, being that level of, can I call it like f- the physicality or the physical thing behind it yeah so i've got i've got some experience um and how do you how do you train different people so let's say you know i get there i've got some experience someone else uh, a new member enrolls or comes in they've got no experience they're scared they unsure how to do this thing how do you how do you work with them how do you build them up how do you take the guys you know from from step one to step two to step three yeah so over time i think it's you know what's helped a lot is the community that the gym has become um it's tough for one individual to to manage all of that Mm. right so the community is a big part of that um we have guys that will step aside and and help new people or even if it's me like i'll work with uh people that just walk in the gym and there'll be other people on the side maybe that ryan is working with some Mm. of the athletes um and like so so everyone falls into kind of a group that mm. we we train them in that group and we start p- progressing them from there yeah and this is now on, not only on the techniques but on fitness as well i mean obviously you need to at least have some form of fitness yeah. to, to take part in this and you kind of you know start small and and build them up yeah so we also give options like mm. when somebody walks in <clears throat> it's good to know 
you know, like, what is your expectation when you walk in the door? Like, why are you here? What do you, what do you want from it? Because, you know, it's, it's important to ask those questions. Yeah. Otherwise, it's an assumption of, of course, yeah, you think, oh, and you're trying to train an athlete, and this guy's not interested in mm. being an athlete. So just, it, the communication is super important. And then we know from there how to approach those yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Um, s- something that in the martial arts world that I really respect is, I think there's a lot of, it teaches a lot of guys a lot of discipline. Um, and is that something that's important to, to what's happening at uh, Grizzly Bear Academy? Um, it's, it's, it's also a bit more than just, you know, coming in rolling or you know, hitting a bag. There's, there's a community behind it. There's a, there's a form of um, growth, if, if that's the, the correct term, for an individual. Um, how do you, what do you what's, what's your take on that uh, with, with martial arts and, and how it helps evolve or, yeah. or change a person? So I think if I, if I talk about jiu-jitsu specifically, like, so the, the boxing is a little bit different. Most of the people come in there and they just, you know, it's like a stress relief type thing. Like mm. the majority, we have a couple of guys that want to compete in, in the boxing and stuff, but majority of the guys, like I say, it's just a... Uh, it's something to release stress, to get mm. a workout, to get a sweat in, right? And mm. uh, the jiu-jitsu side of it, if we talk about discipline. It's again, like I said, you when you start, you the nail, right? And if you don't, over time, if you don't produce, if you don't like be consistent and you don't like put effort into it, you stay the nail, mm. right? And the only way is like putting focus in and applying the the lessons that you learned and you know giving the best of yourself mm. um it, it forms discipline yeah. like otherwise you just don't progress you know yeah. discipline is the only way you're going to start progressing in the gym um mm. you know regardless of like how much a community is there for you right it's a lot Very of the important. time you got to yeah. take stuff on yourself of course yeah of course you can't you can't uh, expect other people to train for you yeah it's that's very important now. So, so there's a there's a very there's a physical side to it, but also while that physical side is is busy developing, it also re- translates over to more a, ma- a mental aspect. Yes, 100%, for yourself. Yeah. No, and do you think um, that that type of training and the main the mental aspect on that, um, it's something that you also take out into the world. You know, away you take it home, you take it to your work, you take it to other. Th- you know, other challenges, other things you, you're involved with outside the gym? Yes, 100%. And, uh, you know, back to that community aspect, right? You, you become who you surround yourself with, right? And when you see the people, like, working hard in the gym, mm. you see, like, how they approach things, their, their attitude towards things, right? Because a lot of it is, like, your attitude and approach to stuff. If you have a bad attitude towards something, right? And understand, sometimes everyone has a bad attitude towards something, right? But it's a, it's a something you can develop. You can mm. develop a good attitude. You can develop that that persistence in like trying to stay focused and stuff. Yeah, and right. these guys see that, and they they start picking up on the the vibe of everyone else in the community, and it helps a lot just to Definitely. take that over. You know, they're like I. I see that, like, I want that for myself. Yeah. And it, and it, like, slowly over time it develops. It's back to that, like, you know, you, you become who you surround yourself with. Yeah. And, and that definitely, like, it, it definitely has effect, uh, an effect on, on how you approach things and how you do things. Uh, and I can, um, I mean, for me, for me personally, with, with my training environment, it's the same thing. The community is, it's such a big part of the whole thing. It's, it's probably, you know, I'd stand there in the mornings, like, yeah. you know, quarter to five or five o'clock, whatever. And just look at all the people coming in. And I think to myself, like, they start feeling like family. They start feeling like, you know, very, very, very close. Yeah. And you definitely, you, you said something like that that kind of reminded me. You, you look at someone in there and the way that they train, the way that they show up, the way that they, you know, how the, the attitude is and the way that they keep pushing on. And that definitely, like, you, you start thinking for yourself, well, I, I'd like to to be able to to also make that mine or to do it you know for myself yeah. in that way that's awesome and you've got the same thing going on you know i listened to uh, you and adrian talking um, mm. on the podcast and you were talking about the the rat race you know mm. and people go they work they go home five days a week and then the, the only time they spend time around people 
is on the weekends. And I don't think we're supposed to do that, right? Mm. We're supposed to interact every day. Mm. Um, if your only interaction is over the weekend, and like uh, that's why I think a lot of people drink, you know, um, on the weekends, it's like they, it's a stress relief. Yeah. But you can take that away if you're spending time around people consistently Definitely. every day, single day. You know, you Definitely. have to take that time out and surround yourself with different people uh, each day. It, it makes such a difference in that mental aspect, right? You, where you stay relaxed, you, it, that stress relief by communicating with people and being around people, doing something together, I think is so important. And not just like yeah, yeah. working every day and then taking the weekend to, to, to do that. And, and then also, you, it, it's kind of a trick. Like you, you think you know, the weekend comes and you are relaxing yeah. and blowing off steam and I wonder what happened now, <laughs> <laughs> but we're still, we're still, we're still on. <laughs> See, Anton's giving us a thumbs up, <laughs> so it's fun. And, um, it's come <laughs> anyway. And, uh, weekend comes and you think you are blowing off steam. You think you're relaxing, you know, sitting back and, and, uh, quickly popping a couple of beers, going out with the guys or whatever. And in fact, you're actually just worsening the whole thing it's it's a it's a very very like afrikaans words now scallum flipping yeah. thing going on it's it actually worsens everything and then you go back into the rat race almost sicker uh, than you were yeah 100 percent. so uh, community it's it's so important and it's amazing what what happens in all of these gyms and all you know the crossfit boxes or uh, just had cory uh, bradenbach here as well from Aktif, and you know all these communities it's also something that I keep on hearing is there's a much bigger picture with the communities and the people that you surround yourself with and, and how the people motivate each other to, to become better. And, and they actually, I, I don't want to use the word addicted, but people start to become, they become like addicted to showing up, being part of that community, being part of that. Yeah. It's just, it's just so much, much better. Yeah. Um, so Warren, more or less, more or less, how many members do you currently have at Grizzly Bear? Plus, minus. Doesn't have to be accurate. Yeah, I think. I mean, consistency makes a difference. Uh, so it's it's like how you really look at like consistent members. Mm. But I would say uh, sixty to seventy members. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. I'd say roughly there. And uh, and and then plans for expansion, for growth, for what's what's happening. Yeah. So. I mean, okay, so this is so this is like something I'll mention over here. So yeah. yourself and, and Vili like, you know, saw potential in, in what I'm doing when through Piavia, like obviously mm. you came around, you guys came around and you guys saw potential. So the the investment in 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 Grizzly Bear uh, to yep. help me grow what what I'm busy, like awesome. my, my passion. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of good things, a lot of Good things happening for Grizzly Bear, and I'm excited for that. Yeah, and there's yeah. a there's a a, 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 a move coming yeah. up yeah. eventually, yeah. which I think is going to be awesome. I'll I'll definitely like definitely without a doubt I promise you, and I will record myself doing this. I'm just, <laughs> but I will show up most yeah. definitely. I'll I'll definitely come and do a couple of classes. I'm so I've you know I'm I'm hooked on this CrossFit thing. Yeah. It's such a cool all round way of training. I love yeah. it. Um, but I see with all the guys coming in here, eventually I'll, I'll be doing like <laughs> <laughs> obstacle course races, jujitsu, boxing, CrossFit. <laughs> I'm going to get super fit yeah. anyway. So yeah, we're very excited, man. And, uh, like, I, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a much bigger, it's a much bigger picture than just the jujitsu. It's, you really are filling in and it, it's, again, it's something that maybe you didn't set out to be that you didn't set out to become that but you are a role model and you have guys looking up to you you have guys look after that weekend you sent us a picture on the whatsapp group and you said the mats were packed yeah that place is just busy and i'm very excited to see what it's gonna awesome. what's, what it's gonna do in the future and then you Myself, can Andrew. you can focus on you do that you do you do your coaching you do your classes and you focus on that yeah so now we're very excited to to get going yeah very much myself and everyone in the gym is super amped for the for the premises as well to have that space, have 
the the opportunity to grow the yeah. athletes and the or not just the athletes but all the members everything yeah the whole bigger picture now we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get going and we're gonna yeah, we've got big plans so we'll, we're gonna take this jujitsu thing yeah I've, i'm i'm very excited i actually uh, i'll mention it uh, on, at the beginning of the year you've seen that blackboard uh, mm. that painted wall over there yeah i wrote down goals over there and i took a picture of it and i, I wiped it off right yeah and it's like just keeping the process. And one mm. of the goals on there were, um, I put it as like expansion of facility, mat the whole facility out. That was a goal. Crazy. And now, wow. And now, like it's uh, like a realization. Yeah, you know? it's happening. And it, it's it, insane. It wasn't. The, it was the process of like what it takes to to get that done. Yeah. And it just happens, right? If you if you put the work into it mm. and uh, you you meet good people, things can happen for you. That's that's very very cool. No, we're excited to see this thing grow, and uh, I'll, I'll give it a go. But you can like put me up against um, like what, what are the like youngest guys? There? <laughs> <laughs> I'll t- <laughs> oh, and, uh, I've got John Lowe there. Right? He's fourteen years old. He no, he, let, taps, let him. he taps fully grown adult over there. He's yes, a monster. Okay. <laughs> Great. I'll I'll take my chances, and just because of the age, I'll, like he can fold me. It's fine. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, tell me, so so being a coach. And this is something also, I think that being a, co- you know, being a coach, again, you don't necessarily set out to be that, uh, yeah. but it happens. Um, being a coach, how and what, you know, do you learn, or have, you, have you learned a lot of things as a coach that have also helped you develop personally? Um, you know, with uh, maybe how you handle things outside or at home or, you know, with the family or the kids or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Uh, do you think being a coach changed perspective maybe on on a couple of things you know andrew that's like yeah i'm a coach but i think how we operate i don't see myself as a coach right Mm. Uh, so so the short answer is like every single day right every single day i develop but i think more than people taking something just from me is i try and take something from everyone everyone has something to offer right yeah like and I try and see something in, in different people and how their journey is. And I take stuff away from that, right? Yeah, yeah. And I try and like implement it, implement it, it. and it. like, yeah, and I just try and see. So it's like how I see, I like back to that, like I don't see myself as a coach. It's like how much have times changed? Like there's so much information out there nowadays, mm-hmm. right? So it's more like how do we structure things around training it's and like so it's easy like anybody can go onto youtube and get a lesson right mm. from the best coaches in the world mm. right but it's how do you structure that training mm. and that's what we try and do so it's like a different type of environment when you step in there and mm. um and yeah like i say we we learn from each other in the gym right and yeah. it's, uh, it's not just one guy giving instructions we learn so every day i take something away and i try and um better myself yeah. each day that's awesome <clears throat> um so beyond being a coach and this is actually it comes back a bit to the same thing though um what principles do you hold dear and close to to yourself uh, and, and this could be you know whatever what principles do you hold dear and close to um, to yourself, to your role as coach, as mentor, as role model, as father, as a husband, as yeah. what principles do you? I think uh, humility. Like again, stay humble. Um, stay the student. You know, like if, if you main, like if you stay a student, you keep life interesting. Yeah, yeah it's like. Don't don't just be idle in things. Um, I think that's one thing, right? Uh, awesome. Like all the time, like you say, you like you were mentioning now, you're going to have to go run marathons and do obstacle courses and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's like I also like it's good. Yeah. It's a great thing, right? Take mm. on challenges. Yeah. We're meant to be challenged. Uh, yeah, it yeah. keeps you. Um, it keeps you going. So mm. I think it's like a principle. It's like never just be idle. Like. Mm. continue stay out of the comfort yeah, zone yeah continue like, to grow and do things because that's that's what makes life fun right that's awesome um mm. something that i'm looking forward to a lot is and again 
you know that isn't what you set out to do but you know i really look forward to to getting uh, the younger generation involved in in with grizzly bear yes and with you specifically uh, i think that's something awesome and we can i think we we can build something really cool with with that yeah um the that message you shared on on that whatsapp group uh, after your fight uh, was really it was a inspiring message it shows that it's there's much more to to you and to grizzly bear than just the you know the the upper flock of her kind of on the surface yeah you know fighting in jiu-jitsu and whatever there's something much deeper and and, and that's that's something you can really be proud of oh, thank you andrew so that's awesome um so how do you how do you connect with um with the students look obviously you you know over time you, you start to learn learn people or you start to know people on a much more personal level yeah um how do you how do you how do you connect uh, with with these guys and how do you kind of interact with them uh, on on a more personal you know personal level yeah um through your coaching and through grizzly bear mm. so i think there's different levels to that so i think on the general like a general level like i'm not that personality that's going to try and impose yeah. my thoughts and opinions on you right um i am an open person like uh if somebody asks me something, I have no problem giving an opinion on it mm -hmm. or something. Like, I'm always there to listen and I always try to be there for, for the students in the gym as much as I can, right? There's a lot of people, so yeah. sometimes it's difficult to, to always be of there. Course, yeah. But as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not just about me. There's always somebody in the gym that's willing to help you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, that's awesome. Yeah, back to the community again. Yeah. And then on the, on an athlete level, that's it's dif difficult, right? Because you don't want to form too much of a relationship mm. outside of um, the coaching because it, it, you have to be hard you mm. have to enforce like when you decide under us you want to be an athlete i don't approach you the same way right oh. it takes it takes somebody telling you like listen you you got to be strict right it's like raising a child like yeah, you, yeah. you get to you, there's you have to show them that discipline on a different level mm. and uh wh when you get too close to someone's um external environment right you there's too much sympathy sometimes that comes into oh, play yeah, so yeah. i try and like separate as much as possible obviously okay. you do form relationships with certain people right and you, you become friends but yeah, yeah generally it's like i want them to to know that when they're there they're going to work mm. right and like i can't take too much consideration on excuses right um, that's i think it's an important thing if you want to be a good athlete, your coach can't, right, be too sympathetic with you. Yeah. He's got to push you to your to your abilities because yeah. you'll never push you to your abilities. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to to step back. Your mind tells you, right? When somebody's like asking you, they hold you accountable mm. to what you said you want to do. It makes a difference. Of course. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what? What would you like to to accomplish uh, with with Grizzly Bear moving forward? So we, we spoke about the expansion. Um, you've got some some athletes there, some mm. guys who who want to compete and really really do the thing. Yeah, I think goal wise, you know, I'm, I don't know. I suppose I'm just that person to be honest. Like when I went when I started mixed martial arts, it was. Mm. I want to do, reach the highest level. Yeah, yeah. In coaching, I want the the, the uh, not just myself, but I want the gym to reach the highest level with the athletes that are there. Right. Yeah. I feel they're deserving of it. Like, mm. so we put in every day. Like, I want guys to achieve UFC level, um, ADCC level. Right. I want guys to make careers out of this, and and not just as saying that. Like. Um, not just as athletes, you know, you guys have presented an opportunity over mm. here. Like we talk about getting kids involved, right? Mm. And as one person, it's not, it's, it becomes difficult. Yeah, yeah. But we grow this thing to a place where a person like me growing up, right? I knew that I wasn't meant to sit and work or be a lawyer and stuff. And I knew it was never going to be like mm. that type of lifestyle for me, right? And I always seeked something that... Yeah that I'd stay passionate for. Mm. And um, 
I'm sure there's a lot of people like that, right? They have their goals in life are different than everyone's goals yeah, in life course, are different. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, this now opens up the door. So somebody wants to do this, but they can still make a career in the gym and, and stuff like that. We can grow something that's bigger than than just one person, yeah. but like a whole environment for people to start doing something with martial arts mm. and um, that's awesome and athletes. So it's it's something that feels like it it kind of it kind of died down a bit. Or, or maybe just I'm um, I'm maybe out of the circles yeah. in Bloom. Um, my father was uh, heavy into uh, karate. So when I was a kid, uh, growing up, my father was my sensei, and and he took me through a couple of belts. Yeah. In the the living room, so we trained like every night, and I could split and do all the stuff, and and um. But that's kind of the only memory. And then I had a friend who who was also you know a lot into JKA. Uh, and he he competed and and he did very well, um, but it feels like the the martial arts scene is kind of uh, it died down a bit. Yeah. So it would be cool to to get it back, you know, get it going again in in Bloom. Yeah, hundred percent. I think um, what makes a, okay. So the biggest influence I think is like when people see other South Africans on the international circuit doing yeah. well, they it's, see well, you know, we're capable. Yeah. Uh, of doing this yeah, yeah. right and it, it takes that time it takes the, like i think that's a misconception a lot of people have mm. it doesn't happen in a year right yep you can't like you have to be there for a while yeah but the, the possibility of getting somewhere is is there even it's as there. a south african you know because for a long time you wouldn't see south africans on the circuit yeah it was a development that had to happen it was amazing uh Drikus, yeah to to see that guy going up and uh and that's why the strickland and adesanya fight this uh, israel this fight the weekend was yes i was ran i made a bed in front of the tv <laughs> like i was i was sleeping there waiting for my alarm to go off to check the fight yeah uh, and i think it was even i was more excited because you know drikas was there and he was you know he was he was supposed to go and fight israel yeah he was there at that level yeah. um so yeah very very inspiring to to see our guys uh, going there a while back you guys went to was it durban uh, and you yeah, came yeah. back with like a bucket load of medals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, the guys are starting to realize mm. um, as, as a group, like they can hang in there with the yeah. with the top guys in, yeah. in, in SA. And uh, we're starting to show that and see that development happen as well. It's, uh, I've been working hard on that myself and Ryan have been working hard on the athletes. Yeah. And uh, we went to Durban and yeah, I think everyone medaled that day, which was great. You know, it was, awesome. a, a, it was another thing on the, on the board that I wrote. Uh, so submission Kings has, they take the top five clubs yeah. um, in that like competition. And I wrote on the board sometime in the year, finishing the top five of okay. the clubs. Right. And we went to Durban and the top four clubs above us were all from Durban. Really? So, you know, the numbers that they had in Durban, obviously, mm. um, helps with that, right? So, yeah, when you yeah. go to Joburg, it's the numbers that help you be the top club. Yeah. But coming from a different region of the mm. country and being in the top five, that was an amazing oh, well uh, achievement. That's, that's that awesome. awesome. I'm, yeah. I can just think the, the guys that you, took, that you took there, yeah, they must be stoked. Yeah, no, with, it was this whole thing. Yeah, it was very that's, cool. That's very, very cool. Um, so, you, at Grizzly Bear, you, you focus on, so you've got jiu-jitsu and you've got boxing. Yeah, and then tell me. So, so MMA actually means you take jujitsu for your ground game, and you take. Sorry, Andrew. not a problem. Apologies. So you take jujitsu, and you take so that's your ground game, and you take boxing in your case, and that's how you you'll carry yourself. So, so if we think about competition now, uh, and not only you said UFC, and I mean that's MMA. So that's a mix of of di different martial arts. So yeah. with Grizzly Bear, you teach boxing. And yes. jujitsu, uh, are those the two you combine there, or is there a bit more yeah, going on? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit more complicated than that. Mm. Um, but you need a foundation to yeah. to work from. So if, if you're doing the boxing and you're doing the jujitsu, it's not like you can't do jujitsu in MMA. It's different, or you can't yeah. do boxing in MMA. It's different, right? Yeah, yeah. But you can't just go straight into like like if you're not or that, that's wrong to say, but 
you kind of need something to work off of, right? So it's important you do those type of classes as well. Yeah. yeah. And then you fall into the MMA class and we, we make the adjustments. Okay, so there. so you use those as the foundations and then you go over to MMA yeah. and, and focus on what's going to happen yeah. in the cage, yeah. in that environment. So they're supplementary um, mm. and, and then we, we develop the MMA. And game obviously, I mean, it teaches you if you, you know, if you end up in a situation in an actual MMA fight where you end up on the ground, you've got the technique you've got that foundation yeah. to, to work off and, and yeah. to use in that position. So, um, Warren, thank you so much for, for, for popping in. Um, I think, you know, one more thing, maybe someone's watching or, uh, that, that wants to get involved and maybe, maybe scared or unsure or whatever the case may be. Um, do you have any words of encouragement or anything? If you can literally talk to that specific person, um, what what would you what would you say to get off and to start going and to do something? Yeah, you know, you you can never know what to expect till you do something, right? And regardless of the outcome of if you did that or you enjoyed it, it was difficult or it happened, mm -hmm. things didn't work out or things worked out, regardless of what you do, right? You gotta at least try and put yourself out there. Um oftentimes it brings good results, right? You you be, you get realizations and you can move forward. But it's mm -hmm. never a good idea just to sit and ponder on something, right? Don't keep it in your mind. Like the only way you're gonna let it go is to go step out and try it, and you'll be surprised on on uh, what that can bring for you. It's awesome. So guys, if you uh, if there's someone there watching, I encourage you. I'll leave uh, details to, to the website and the socials for, for Grizzly Bear. And uh, I encourage you guys to make contact with Warren. He's in Longenhoven Park. Come and join. Be part of this new growth that's, that's going to come now and it's going to happen. And um, yeah, stop being scared. Huh? <laughs> Just take it. Just do it. Thanks, so, Andrew. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Warren. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.